she calls herself Her Majesty, the Queen, the Queen of Canada. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 6. Everyone has the right to recognition everywhere as a person before the law. Well, Your Majesty, the Queen, Queen of Canada, so-called, if I take recognition as a person in Canada before the law, what am I rendering myself? What do I become? Oath or affirmation of citizenship. I, the human being, the man or woman, swear or affirm that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, and to her successors, and that I will faithfully observe the laws of Canada and fulfill my du duties as a Canadian citizen. So, Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, the Queen of Canada, if I take recognition as a legal person, then I am bearing true allegiance to you. Is that not so, Queen? The one who calls herself Queen of Canada. I have a question for you. In your Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Article 26, does it not state that the guarantee in this Charter of certain rights and freedoms, the rights and freedoms that you give to the legal person through paying for the privilege by a license or permit, won't those rights and freedoms, won't they not be construed as denying the existence of other rights and freedoms that exist in Canada? Could you please help me to understand this, O oh Queen? I believe that there are more freedoms and more rights in existence in Canada that are not part of the acts or the legisla legislative rules. In the Canadian Bill of Rights, is this not a writing of Her Majesty? Queen, did you not write this? I see in the Bill of Rights a statement here. Therefore, Her Majesty, by and with the advice and consent of the Senate and House of Commons of Canada, enacts as follows. Queen, didn't you enact this enactment, this regulation, here in Canada? Can I draw your attention, Queen, to Article Number 5? Please forgive me for taking so much time. It says here that Nothing in Part 1 shall be construed to abrogate or abridge any human right or fundamental freedom not enumerated therein that may have existed in Canada at the commencement of this Act. Well, Queen, I thought that human beings were born free. However, Queen, if I take recognition in Canada as a legal person, I become a subject to you. I become a subject and your servant, and I lose my freedom as a human being. But if I don't take recognition as that legal person, then I see in your Bill of Rights that it states that my freedoms are still in existence for me. It is written in the Constitution Act that the executive government and authority of and over Canada is hereby declared to continue to be vested in the Queen, in yourself. So how come when I contact you, you seem to have lack power to be able to help? How come when human beings approach you, you claim to have no power? Is it because that all powers and authorities and functions which are under any act of Parliament of Great Britain or of the Parliament of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland or of the Legislature of Upper Canada, Lower Canada or Canada, Nova Scotia or New Brunswick are at the Union vested in or exercisable by the respective governors? or lieutenant governors of those provinces with the advice or with the advice and consent of the respective executive councils thereof. So Her Majesty the Queen, are you saying that you can't help a human being? Are you saying that you can't help a man and woman here in Canada if they contact you concerning their human rights and freedoms that are being denied here? And are you saying that you delegated your power to a certain office here in Canada? And it's those ministers that we need to be contacting in order to be exercising our rights and freedoms as human beings? Is that what the Majesty, the Queen of Canada, is saying? Buckingham Palace, 16th of April, 2012. Dear 
the name is concealed. The Queen has asked me to thank you for your letter of the 17th of December. And I apologize for the delay in replying, which is due to the high volume of mail received in recent weeks. While Her Majesty has taken careful note of the views you express, I should explain that this is not a matter in which the Queen would intervene. As a constitutional sovereign, Her Majesty acts through her personal representatives. The Governor General, on the advice of her Canadian ministers, and therefore it is to them that your appeal should be directed. I am sorry to send you a disappointing reply. Yours sincerely, Miss Jeannie Vine, Deputy to the Senior Correspondence Officer. Don't feel bad, Miss Jenny. This is exactly the reply I was looking for, or this is exactly the reply that will help men and women here in Canada. Because the ministers, if they play ignorant, now we have a letter from a correspondence officer to the Queen that tells men and women in Canada who they must appeal to for the expression of their human rights and freedoms. Thank you for fulfilling 